Hey guys, how's it going today? So the workout we got today is the lat pull down and that's a, a back workout. So the muscles that it is working today is the latimus dorsi, the lower trapezius, teres major, and a little bit of our rhomboids. So on my kind of, I do this, but it's, you know, it's not that good, but it, it'll do. So what we have today is, um, it's gonna work your trap muscles, which give you these cool muscles, you know, like in, like Bane in the movie Batman, but. Um, so the trap muscle is a big muscle. There's the, the top of the trap, there's the lower trap. It's gonna work our lower trapezius, which is kind of down in here. We got our rhomboid muscles, which they kind of like, I think, help our back get like thick and like the width of the back. So that's the rhomboid right here. We have our teres major, which is kind of on the side right here. That That's gonna be a muscle that has also worked in our lat pull down. But the main one that I really like is the latimus dorsi. So it's, it's right here along the back and it gives us like these cool little wing um, muscles, you know, like you always see bodybuilders and they flare them out. And that's gonna be our main focus when we, we do the lat pull down because yeah, it's in the name. So, yep, that's that's gonna be our muscles work. So now let's get into the, the meat and potatoes of how to do this because, you know, when I first started, it I didn't really think it was this, you know, complex, but there's a lot of things that go into doing workouts. So let's talk about our first thing, which is full range of motion. So when we're doing this exercise, we want to be going pretty much all the way up, either a dead hang or all the way up to just really stretch that muscle and coming down to the top of the chest. So that, that'll be full range of motion for us. And I'll show you here in a second. So the second thing we're going to go over is going too heavy or too light. Too light, you know, we might not feel it, but we're going to be doing a bunch of reps. We, we don't want to do that. I mean, maybe like 10 reps or whatever, but if it's too light, we're not really, you know, getting that stimulus for our back and we really want that. Another problem is going too heavy. So if you have to swing these bad boys or whatever, and you, I mean, you're gonna know when it's too heavy, then um, kind of put that, you want a happy medium, what I always like to say. I mean, cause you, you do a happy medium, you're gonna get stronger. You're gonna be able to lift more weights, but you gotta, you gotta know what your weight is. The next thing is, let's go to the top of the chest. Right here, you don't wanna be too heavy and not be able to get it there. So the top of the chest and then all the way up. Again, we do not want to swing these, you know, don't want bad form, you know, don't load up the weight. We're not trying to look cool. We're trying to get an amazing back here. The next thing is slow and control. So when we come down, we squeeze that back. We don't want to let um, the weight do the work for us and let it just kind of like take it back up. So control that positive portion of it. So bring it down that negative, the positive, take it back up, control it all the way back up and you're gonna, you're gonna work your muscle better. So the next thing too is um, being too rigid. I used to be a culprit of this because I used to try to think the more like straight up I was, the, the more I was working my back and I wasn't swinging into it. But um, there, there's some bad things that come from being too rigid. You know, you might, you know, you might feel it in your shoulders. You don't want to put pain on that shoulder. Really, like I said, everybody's different. You know, again, I'm sure, you know, some people are taller, some people are thicker, skinnier, whatever. So find like the right, um, way that works it for you whether you are kind of straight up or you're back down a little bit so what works for us and again what I always want to talk about is breathing so again on the way down the negative portion you're squeezing you breathe out then you're breathing on the way back up so breathe out on the way down breathe in on the way back up so the next thing is our hand grip so I again when I first started um, I had you know older people telling me that um, the wider we went, the more activation in our lats that we got. But that is not necessarily always true because, I mean, again, we're all made differently and we should be searching for the hand grip that we feel in our back the most. Not, oh, we gotta go super wide or we gotta go super narrow. It's it's all the grip that you like and you feel it in your back. I, um, I started doing like a little more of a narrow grip because it feels better in my shoulders and I really actually feel it more in my back. So I like, not super narrow, but you know, kind of, kind of. And I'll show you here in a second. Um, like I said, close grip, wide grip, underhand grip, um, and even we got this bad boy, which is kind of a super close grip. And I feel like it works a different part of your back, but I still feel it in my back, so I like it too. And again, it's all on choice. What works for you, what you like. So, um, 
yeah, we'll get into it in our last one. I'll show you here in a second. So let's get into this bad boy. Oh, go ahead. Come on. Come over here, man. Let's take this. So, like I said, I'm finding my grip. I like it a little closer. I used to go really wide out here, but now I like it closer. You can have it close, you can have it underhand, whatever. So I find my grip. Um, I come underneath here, come down. So look, I'm all the way up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it down to the top of the chest and then all the way back up. So I don't want to stop like right here, oh, come right here, not going all the way up or not going all the way down. You want to go full range of motion. Boom. Remember breathing out. <sighs> breathing on the way back up. Okay, so you got that covered. Again, don't swing. If you know if it's too heavy, you might be like going, ooh. <sighs> no, we're, we're not doing that. So don't swing. What else we got? Too rigid. Um, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about the one of the main things now. So how to really set it up? <laughs> we tilt our head back a little, put our chest up, and get a little bit of a lean. So again, breathing in or breathing out, <sighs> breathing in, breathing out, <sighs> breathing in. And see that slow and controlled. I'm not swinging, then just like letting it take itself back up. Slow and control. Boom. Squeezing that back, feeling good. Not too rigid, not straight up. Get a little bit of a lean. Back up. And so that, that's how to do our lap pull down. So, you guys have a good one. Make sure it's not too close. No, it's not. Go ahead. Okay guys, so our first exercise is the incline press. And so it's literally like, a, um, and we're gonna use dumbbells today, just cause we don't have one in our gym. But if you have a bench that can move up and down, then it's totally fine. Some gyms you might have a, um, a like a barbell press and it's already inclined and it's like almost like a bench press, but it's inclined. But today we're using dumbbells. So the first tip I have for you is, um, again, everybody's different, whether we're tall, small, um, whatever, how our body's built. Um, so for my body, which I, I like to do is I like to have a, a taller incline because I, I really feel it in my chest. And again, it's all about how you feel this. Sometimes um, some people might not, they might feel it more in their shoulders, especially if it's too inclined. Some people will like it like a little bit more down like this. But like, again, I say, I like to have it more taller. So when you, when you set this up, find your right incline. You want to be feeling it in the top of the pecs um, again, you're gonna feel any like pressing motion, like a bench press or an incline um, dumbbell press. You're gonna you're gonna feel it in your shoulders a bit, and you're gonna feel it in your triceps because those muscles are helping it work. But again, we're we're trying to focus that um, that contraction on the top of our chest. So that's that's what I got right here is to find your right incline. The next thing that we're gonna do is if we're down like this, when we when we sit back into our incline, I like. And this one again is all about how you feel. I like to stay at a, like a, an angle that's not 90, like 45. Again, remember I always talk about like, the if the elbows are more in, you're gonna hit triceps. The um, elbows are more out, it's kind of more chest, but again, you're getting into like a little bit hazardousness with your shoulders. So find the right angle that works for you, but doesn't hurt your shoulders. You shouldn't really have no pain in the shoulders. So. Again, so when I come back, I'm gonna find the right angle right here. Ooh, that's nice. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna retract my shoulder blades again. That's gonna help your chest to be more emphasized. It's gonna make you more grounded on this, this chair. I got my five points of contact. And then what I'm gonna do is remember to breathe. So breathe out all the way up. And when we're coming down, Nice eccentric or concentric contraction. Remember that's um, where we're really feeling it, the negative. So, oh, nice little control. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna touch the outsides of like my shoulder, my pec, like right here and burst up. Sometimes you get into like where I, I remember when I was younger, I used to just come down, stop right here, back up. But I want, I want that full contraction 
You might get less reps like this, but you're doing it properly. You're just tapping it, coming back up. And that, that's how to properly do it. So again, find your right, you know, where, where you want your elbows to go, what feels right for you. And then you're gonna burst up, slow and controlled down, touch the pec right here, boom, back up. And you should really feel that in your pec. Retract the shoulder blades. And that's what I got for you for the incline press. Okay guys, how's it going? So if you're here, you're back for number two. So today what we're gonna be covering is the bench press, which is really one of my favorite. And we're gonna be covering a, like a full myriad of things, and maybe not a myriad, but we're gonna be covering, you know, some basic things on how to how to set it up, how to execute, you know, what muscles are work, and maybe just some random stuff. So right, let's let's get into that. Okay guys, so the first thing that we have on our list, number one, boom, is the muscle that it will be worked. And that muscle is the pectoral muscle, which is is kind of the man boob right here, you know, it has a little bounce to it. And um, so we have the major, the minor, the tricep, and the deltoid. Boom. Okay, so this is um, my buddy Justice's rendition of um, human anatomy. So it's, it's pretty nice. So the muscle that is worked, again, is the major, which is the top portion of it. You know, I, I wish I could, we could have drawn that better, but it's good enough. Um, and the other one is the minor, which is underneath it. It's, it's kind of like by the nipple-ish part or whatever. And the other muscle that is worked, you know, what comes into play is the anterior deltoid. Anterior means front, posterior means back. So like, cause when we push up, we're, we're, we're getting a little strain in, the, in our shoulders, our deltoids. And the other muscle that is worked, depending on your hand placement, not that hand placement, like depending on how much your, your elbows are flared, whether they're 45 or 90, we, we, we have, we, our triceps come into play. So those are the muscles worked. Now let's get into the setup. Okay, so, yeah, Gregory, get in that thing. Sorry, sometimes my goat likes to bench press, but, so, the first thing we'll talk about is, like, especially on our bench press, is where our hand placement is gonna be. Whether we, we put our hands, like, on the inside of the hash mark, which is really close, which is still hitting chest, or the outside. I literally like to go to the outside, because I'm, I'm when I'm on bench, I'm, I'm really trying to hit my chest, you know? I mean, you could do a tricep bench, but I'm here for my pecs. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the arch. So you can have an arch in there, like, where you kind of get your back up, but I'm more of a, like, close to flat kind of guy. I, I like it more flat. But it's it's all, the thing I always talk about is it's all on preference, what works for you. Because remember, we're all different. I'm small, you might be tall, you know, who, who knows. The next thing is the points of contact. And that that really helps us bench press. That's good technique. And what that is, is it's our head, point one, shoulders, point two, our butt, point three, and our, and our feet. So that, that's, you know, one, two, three, four, five. So the points of contact. The next thing that we're gonna talk about is, is sh shoulder blades. So I like to pull my shoulder blades down and in when I bench press, because it, it, you know, it just accentuates the chest more and it really gets you ready to, to blast off. The next thing, if we, we load up, I, I used to I used to bench press where my hands were underneath it, kind of like, like putting a lot of weight on my hands, but you don't really want that. You, you want your like, imagine that your wrists, like you're punching the ceiling so it's directly under. If you can see, like my wrists are directly under, but before they used to be really, really far back, but that, that's not how we're gonna do it. And yeah, it's just, it's just better this way. So the, the, the next thing is the angle that your 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 elbows are gonna take. So if if I was at a 45 degree angle, that, that is that is perfect in my opinion. Because you know it's right above the neck line, or you're, you're coming down, that's where the meat of the, the chest is. That's where you want it. But again, that's even about preference. If you like to bench press and your, your elbows come out a bit, um, that's fine. It's, you know, again, it's about preference. But I always think the closer you go, triceps, 
and the more out is chest. And even when you get into like heavier weights, your elbows, I mean, when you're pushing, I mean, I see it when I'm pushing, sometimes I see them flare out. And that, that's totally fine as long as you, like I said, you, 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 know, you got everything right. Five points of contact, shoulder blades, you're making sure to breathe. Um, yeah, then, then, then you got it. So now let's, let's, let's whip into the execution. Okay, I know I said execution, but right before I get into it, let's talk about how we're gonna breathe. So once we, once we r unrack the, the weight off the bar, uh, we need to take a nice deep breath into our ribcage and then once we lower it We're pushing out we're pushing that air out because it, it's just good proper form And also the one thing is we do not want to get hernia, especially when we get in this higher weight um, It's it's a lot of strain on the body then you know for one I, I really need to stress this to you guys um, I had a hernia and it's it's no joke. It's not fun so yeah, make sure to do really good breathing. And the other thing too is, like, one of my mentors always told me too, like, you want that bar, I, I talked about like comfortability, but I like to, I really like to do this, is make sure that bar is right over the nipples and you get that from the, the 45 degree angle. And yeah, and, and the, fi the final thing before we, we pop in here is, um, Eccentric and concentric contractions. Eccentric is the negative, which is coming down, and concentric is the positive bursting up. So whether that's squats, deads, bench press, um, even if you're doing biceps, make sure it's time under tension. Make sure to control the movement down, and then you can burst up. Because I, I admit, even when I first started with lifting, like I was kind of just like throwing things down, letting the weight of the um, you know the weight take it down for me but when you control that then that, that's when you get a really good burn and that's what you want it doesn't matter if it's 45s on the sides you know if you if you're if you're doing it properly man you're gonna you're gonna see your muscles grow so that's one of the best tips i can tell you because i didn't i didn't do it for a long time but i mean you know, i'm trying to help you guys so anyway so now let's get into this bad boy Again, five points of contact. Another thing I didn't say was my feet are on the ground because there's a leg drive. It's gonna help me push through the movement. So I'm underneath, I, I choose my hash marks. I'm, I'm coming out here, pulling the shoulder blades in. Again, five points of contact. Taking a nice deep breath. Look at my wrists are, boom. All right, hold them down. Now breathe in. Eccentric, boom. I mean, you don't gotta go that slow, but control it down. Right over my meaty goodness. Right over the nipples. There we go, that's, that's what the bench press is. I mean, back in the day, I did not know that there was all those steps, but going through all those steps, it, it's really helped my chest take off and I don't have to work it so much. It's, it's, it's a good deal and you guys are gonna like it too. Okay, so the last tips we're gonna talk about is having a spotter. Whenever you do any type of intense physical activity, and especially if you, um, there's a chance that there might injury might occur, you want to get a spotter. So in this video, I don't have a spotter because for, for one, I'm a vet. I'm just kidding, that's not the reason, but this is lightweight, um, and it's, I don't know, it's not that dangerous, but once you guys, if you guys are new, newly in the gym, Get a spotter, get a friend, family member, someone someone to help you out because honest truth, I got pinned once before for like five minutes under a bench press and I had to have some lady come out and get it off my chest and it was, and it was embarrassing. So you, you don't want that. You know? And the next thing I'm gonna talk about is when you get into um, the muscles that you're gonna be working. So today, I'm let's say I'm working chest. First off, the bean is the, is the bench press. What I want to do is, you know, I might even use the bar or I might warm up with, um, let's say, a, a light weight on the sides. You know, you just want to get that muscle ready to work, ready to, just, I guess, ready to work. But another story about that too is um, one time I, I got a new max bench and I was just so proud of it. And again, it was in the beginning of my days. Um, I, 
I would hear all the older people like, oh, warm up, warm up, a stretch. And that's my next thing I'm talking about. But I, I, did, I didn't really want to listen. And um, like, like, I got 285 that, that, that Wednesday. And Thursday, I wanted to show my friend. And um, he, he helped me unrack it. And I did not warm up. I came down and I ended up pulling my pec, man. It, that hurt and you do not want it, man. The doctor said I was gonna be out for like only six weeks. It ended up being like three months, you know? So again, um, from my examples, make sure to warm up. The next thing too is stretching. Stretching will also help that muscle get ready to work. And uh, that's another thing, like I've, I have, um, I've had shoulder problems like from bench press, um, things like that. Um, the things I'm telling you is just from personal experience and from actually going further and learning that um, your muscle will work better, um, you'll be less prone to injury if you do these things, warming them up and stretching. And so the last thing that I will leave you with is do not be a cheater. Do not, like um, I used to bounce my weights back in the day, like boom, or I had a buddy too, which would also put like a foam roller in his chest and he would bounce off and you know I, I did it too you know like I, I thought I was getting an awesome bench press but again that's not that's letting the weight come down and bounce you you want that eccentric contraction touch the chest touch it lightly and then bounce off but no bouncing no cheating cheaters never prosper so yeah that's that's the end of my video I hope you guys enjoyed it and see you next time all right guys Zachary here so remember, if you like the video, to comment in the comment section and you'll be eligible for incentives. And it's, it's MHA Nation, they're actually pretty good ones. So, see you guys later. All right, guys, so the workout's coming. So we got, well, the workouts we got today is lat pull down, incline dumbbell press, one arm dumbbell row, and our bench press. So let's get into it. Oh. Get that stretch and let it go down. Protract and retract. Ones, huh? 
I don't know about that 15 second rest though. <sighs> I had a 20 second rest. Tip to you guys, just don't skip cardio. If you need to take a break, take a break. Challenge today. Oh. Really, the race again there, too.
final one. Come on, lads. Come on, lads. Lactic acid fatigue in my wrist. Come on. Oh man, that's it for today. Man, a tip I'm gonna give you guys is do a decent weight. I went too heavy today, so tired. But hope you guys have a good Friday. Happy Halloween. Boom.